It has been more than a month and a half since the coronation ceremony of Madhurandaka Uttamakalathava. Then the winter season went by faster than usual. The season of spring came riding on the divine chariot called Thural. Bingleys peered with their coral-coloured noses near the saffron-coloured shoots of the mango trees. The golden shoots of the royal trees swayed and sang. The quills squealed wildly, dropping their pearly buds from the punne trees. The goddess of nature shivered. Bomadavi burst out with joy. Trees that had fallen off their leaves and appeared bald suddenly burst into buds. The Madhavi pandals and jasmine bushes were struggling to bear the weight of the bouquets. Flow in rivers has decreased. The people of the Chola country were blooming inside and out. The red rice grown in the fields has been harvested and taken to the barns. The political uncertainty is over and the worry is over. People were preparing to celebrate common festival in cities and villages. Arrangements were also made to conduct Vasant Utsavam in temples. Theatre stages were set up at every junction of the streets. Seeing all these pleasant scenes, Valavarayan was going towards the city of Palyare. This time he did not enter the city in disguise. By entering through the main city gate which was open, Ilay Aprati reached the palace of Kundave Devi without hindrance. Many of her friends like Ilay Aprati Kundave, Vanathi etc. came to the door of Puttajula Palace and welcomed him as Mukaman. After the fatigue of the long journey, she told him to meet her in the forest near the palace and tell her the details of the journey. Vandiyathevan did not take much time to relax. He quickly finished the bath drinks and went to the forest. There the youngest brat was awaiting his arrival. It was impossible to tell who was more interested in meeting each other. Both were eager to hear each other's news. But is that the only reason for their excitement? Could it be because they want to be sure about their future life? Isn't it possible that the youth who caused a stir in the innocent objects also caused a stir in their emotional hearts? Sir, I understand that you were not entirely successful in what you set out to do, is that true? Asked Ile Aprati. True, goddess. In what undertaking have I so far succeeded? Valavarayan said and sighed. Don't say that. Didn't you bring my younger brother from the country of Ela? It was only because of Aromas Hivarman that the Chola country survived until now. Said Kundave. I caused unnecessary danger to Aromas Hivarma and brought him alive with severe cold. That too with the help of Queen Punguzali. When I told Sendan Amuthan and Punguzali to take my friend to Nagapatanam, I never dreamed that they would come to Tanjapuri and mount a lion in this Chola empire and be crowned with bells. I have not forgotten that they were the ones who saved the life of the great Chola emperor, and neither did he. The great Chola wanted them to be the autocrats of the Chola country in place of the great corrupter. Luckily I survived. What are you saying? Is the post of Thanatakari of this Chola empire ordinary? Is it greater than the post of prime minister than the post of Matanda Nayak? Even the emperor cannot do anything without the favor of Thanatakari. Goddess. Once I happened to hide in the underground treasure land of the Great Reaper. Then I saw a spider's web in the light of the heaps of gold coins. I also saw the skull of a dead man. I resolved never to go near that treasure dungeon again. The younger bratty smiled and said, Even if you are a dictator, you don't need to go to the treasure dungeon. He has decided to use all the materials in that dungeon to build a large fleet and build ships. He has also received the permission of the new emperor. She said. In Tanjavur I learned that the new emperor and his title Mahishi had gone to Kadakare with Aromas Hivarma. Yes, they were very sorry that they could not take themselves with them when they went. I am not sorry about that. I will go to Kodi Kaker now and join them. My only regret is that Aromas Hivarman married the princess of Kajumbalar while I was away. Why, sir? Don't they like their friend marrying my friend? God! I didn't say that. I am sorry for not being there for that wedding. Aromas Hivarmar's previous birth blessing gave Vanatha to marry him. Their friend Vanathi is also blessed but why are they in such a hurry? They were not in a hurry, I was in a hurry. My father and mother wanted to leave for Kanchi. 
I told them that the marriage should take place before they left. This relieved the heart of the great velar of Khajumbalur. On the day of Makutabhishek, they suddenly put the Chola crown on the head of their friend Uttama Chola, which caused great shock to the great velar. Many others would have been shocked then. It was a surprise to all of us. You two friends kept the news very, very secret. Goddess! I thought he would have told them only. If it was a few months earlier, he would have told me. Aromazai never did anything without asking me. Why has he changed now? Comrade Das Han! My dear brother has become like this only after joining them. He who was one inside and outside has become adept at Kata Natak and Tantram Mantra. Devi! Don't blame me in vain. Their younger brother is entirely responsible for the hypocritical drama that crowned Utam Chola. I debated whether to deceive everyone like this. Ramaprayaran gave an example of grace when he deceived the people of Ayodhya and went to the forest late at night. I asked him if he shouldn't tell them at least once in his life. He said that he will do something without asking for advice and will get praise from them later. Goddess! Is what the prince did a good thing for them? No one could have done a better job for me than this. Thank you my brother for helping me with this. Said the youngest brat. Goddess! I thought they were eager to see Aromas Hivarma mount the lion and crown the world with bells. It is true that I wished so earlier. I changed my mind after my friend Venati made such a vow. Also, what will the world think if Damayan is killed and Manda immediately ascends the throne? Yes, goddess. Aromas Hivarma was greatly disturbed by the terrible deeds that had happened in the Sri Lankan royal dynasty. But even he was not that worried about it. When some people tried to blame me for the heinous crime of murder, he was determined to climb the Chola Singh Adana to save me. Fortunately, the great Pula Vedarayar took the blame for that crime. He saved me from that vain blame by putting it on him. Pity! The Chola country seems desolate without that old man. It's very sad to think that my brother is gone after Damien. Oh! Is the little scoundrel dead too? Are you sure? Kundave asked. Vandiyathevan said, when I said goodbye to him, he was alive. But how can a person who has fallen down from a steep mountain survive? He should have died. My heart beats when I think that I was somehow responsible for the death of the little one. Sir! Tell me all about it in detail. Didn't you and my brother conspire to get the young priest out of the Sava Hall on the coronation day? Tell me in detail about it. I couldn't ask my brother for details about it. I wanted to ask them and find out. You shouldn't tell anything secret to women. I thought you didn't tell me before, can you tell me now? Goddess! Not without telling them for that reason. The prince wanted them to be surprised at least once. I wasn't surprised at all. I assumed you two were up to something like this together. I was a little worried that something might go wrong. Indeed, a mistake has been made. Although the most important thing was accomplished, it was not possible to prevent another disaster. Perhaps if you had consulted them, this would not have happened. Vandiyathevan said. Later, Santhan recounted in detail all the plans, intrigues and activities they had planned since Pani's Selvar decided to grant the title to the new Madhurand Hakativar who was Amuthana. Aromas Hivarma thought that if he told in advance that he was going to crown Madhuran Thakdev, there would be many objections and obstacles. Kajumbalar Velars and Thirukovalar Malayams will oppose the idea as before. On his deathbed, Pony's brother-in-law should be crowned. His people will want to fulfill his will. Chinapalyavatarayar found out that his son-in-law was not the real Madhurandha. He couldn't be more excited to install Punguzali daughter of Padakati, in Singadanam. Sembian Mathavi, Santhana Muthanakia Madhurand Hakadivan and Pungazalai will all object. Sundara Chola may also have been unwilling to ignore their objections. Keeping all these reasons in mind, Pani's Selvar wanted to keep what he had decided to do a secret till the last minute. During Makutabhishek, he sent away all the agitators, 
who could raise objections and ban them because of their love for him or their jealousy of Madhurand Hakkar, one by one giving different reasons. He had told his secret purpose only to Vandiyathevan because he wanted someone to help him. Both used to think and plan and do things carefully. During Makut Abhishek, he sent away all the agitators, who could raise objections and ban them because of their love for him or their jealousy of Madhurand Hakkar, one by one giving different reasons. He had told his secret purpose only to Vandiyathevan because he wanted someone to help him. Both used to think and plan and do things carefully. During Makut Abhishek, he sent away all the agitators, who could raise objections and ban them because of their love for him or their jealousy of Madhurand Hakkar, one by one giving different reasons. He had told his secret purpose only to Vandiyathevan because he wanted someone to help him. Both used to think and plan and do things carefully. Young Sambuvarian Kanamaran, Parthapendra Paul Avan, Kajumbalar Velar etc. have been sent away from the town. But it is not possible to send the little rascal out of town. There was also a talk of putting a crown of beads on the head of Pani's lover with his hand. At that time, if the new Madhurand Hakkar, who was Sendan Amudana, asked him to crown his head, would he not have objected? If he refuses it will be considered a great omen. Many other confusions can arise from it. So the two friends thought of some strategy to get him out of the hall during the coronation. No fully satisfactory strategy has emerged. At this time all were Kadayan came and told a strange news. Aromas Hivarmar had sent Alvar Kadayan with the consent of the chief minister to find out where Ravidasan's group of danger saviors of the Pandian country had gone, whether Nandini Devi was still with them, and where the boy who was crowned at midnight in Tirapurambayam forest was hidden. He had also trusted Tirumala to find out whether the escaped from the underground prison was with them, whether it was true that old Madhurandha had died as Kanamaran had said, or whether he had also escaped and joined the conspirators. They thought it would take a long time for him to get to know this news. But all were Kadayan returned within a few days. He saw Roxamal near Kalamalai who belonged to the Ravidasan clan and was the wife of Padakati Muragayan. Alvar Kadayan thought that if he followed her and observed where she was going, he would reach where Ravidasan's crowd was. But to his astonishment Rakamal was on his way to Tanjapurai. However, following her as a trick to learn about the dangers, he disguised himself and continued behind her. After approaching Varayur, people were flocking to Tanjore to witness the coronation of Pani's Selvar. Roxamal also attended that meeting. However all were Kadayan did not let her go and continued to come to Tanjore. He was much surprised to see Rock Makmal with a crowd enter the fort of Tanjore and circle around the palace of the little Palyavatarayar. He immediately went to Arulmas Hivarma and Vandiyathevan and informed them of this news. At first they thought of imprisoning Rakamal. They decided not to do that and it was important to know why she had come. They surmised that she must have brought some news to the daughter of the small farmer. They decided not to tell Chinapalyavatarayar that now and that they could use it to throw him out of the Sava Hall during the coronation ceremony. He immediately went to Arulmas Hivarma and Vandiyathevan and informed them of this news. At first they thought of imprisoning Rakamal. They decided not to do that and it was important to know why she had come. They surmised that she must have brought some news to the daughter of the small farmer. They decided not to tell Chinapalyavatarayar that now and that they could use it to throw him out of the Sava Hall during the coronation ceremony. He immediately went to Arulmas Hivarma and Vandiyathevan and informed them of this news. At first they thought of imprisoning Rakamal. They decided not to do that and it was important to know why she had come. They surmised that she must have brought some news to the daughter of the small farmer. They decided not to tell Chinapalyavatarayar that now and that they could use it to throw him out of the Sava Hall during the coronation ceremony. They surmised that she must have brought some news to the daughter of the small farmer. They decided not to tell Chinapalyavatarayar that now and that they could use it to throw him out of the Sava Hall during the coronation ceremony. They surmised that she must have brought some news to the daughter of the small farmer. They decided not to tell Chinapalyavatarayar that now and that they could use it to throw him out of the Sava Hall during the coronation ceremony. When all were Kadayan again went near the palace of Chinapalyavatarayar, 
he did not find Rakamal. The crowd for the coronation was getting bigger and bigger. All Alwarkadayan was standing in the crowd and watching the palace gate carefully. Two women came out of the palace. One of them was carrying a baby on her hip. Another one of those who had come was wearing a headscarf and half hiding her face, Tirumalai surmised that she might be the daughter of Chinnapalyavatarayar. He wasn't sure whether to stop them, or see where they were going. By this time they had disappeared into the crowd. Assuming that they must have gone towards the gate of the fort, Alwarkadayan went there. He saw them mount the palanquin a short distance beyond the gate of the fort and saw the horsemen encircling. He came to the Sava Hall saying that there should be no delay in telling this news to the little Pavatareya. At that time, Pani's Selvar was talking to the Tamil poet. When Chinab Palyavatarayar told the news of Alwarkadayan, he immediately left with him. He went to his palace and searched for his daughter. He was startled to know that his daughter was not there. Alwarkadayan decided that the news should be true. By the time he returned to the Sava Mandapam, he said, Long live Madurathaka Adamachola Emperor. There were slogans. After learning what had happened in the Sava Hall, he realized that he no longer had a job there. Taking a few intimates with him, he set out in search of his runaway daughter. His heart was boiling when he thought that his daughter would join the dangers of the Pandya clan, the hereditary enemies of the Chola clan. That night, after the coronation procession of Uttamach Chola Emperor was completed with great pomp, Alwarkadayan told Nambai Aromas Hivarmar the details of what happened that afternoon. Aromas Hivarma thought with Vandiyathevan. All three of them knew how skilled Ravi Dasan was in Tantram mantras. They thought that the hot-tempered little rascal would not be able to defeat their trick and would be trapped by them and would be in danger. They also thought that he could do such a heinous thing as kill his own daughter. Therefore, Vandiyathevan and Alvarkadayan decided that it would be best to leave to rescue and bring back the small peasants and to find out where Ravi Dasan's group of Pandyans were and what they were planning. Thus Chinnapalyavatarayar went after his daughter and the conspirators who had taken her without her knowledge. The two trailing behind saw that the little hunter must have been left wandering around for a long time. From this they concluded that the people who took his daughter must have tried to trick him into going the other way. After traveling a long distance westwards along the banks of the Kaveri, they turned at the confluence of the Amaravati River with the Kaveri and traveled in a southwesterly direction along that tributary. They reached Animalai region which was the border between Chera and Kangu countries. After reaching the foothills of Animalai, the journey became very difficult. The trees were very thick and luxuriant in that forest area. Terrible roars of wild animals were heard in all four directions. Driving the horses was very difficult. There was also the fear that if they left the horses and went on foot, they might become a prey to wild animals. At last the two friends reached a thick forest area beyond which they could not drive their horses. Recently I heard another horse neighing somewhere. When they reached the place in search of it, they saw that the horse was mounted by the small farmer and there was a man to guard it. The man said that Chinnapalyavatare and three others who had accompanied him had gone on foot from there. The friends went up after telling their horses to take care of the man. They traveled a long way through dense jungles where no sunlight penetrated. Then, they climbed the wooded mountain passes. They had to take paths where they couldn't tell what lay ten feet away. At last they reached a place where there was some light. This gap was caused by a waterfall falling vertically from the mountain. It seemed impossible to continue the journey beyond that. Because the mountain wall rises so steeply there. No matter how much I searched, I could not find any way up. The friends decided that they should take a bath in the waterfall and rest for a while and go back. The little hunter and his companions thought that they must have fallen prey to wild animals. At this point they saw an unexpected and miraculous sight. Above the mountain where the cascade of the waterfall began, two human figures were seen. Fighting, they were approaching the waterfall. Staring at them, it became clear that the two were already acquaintances. One was a small farmer, the other was an old Madhurand Hakar who married his daughter, Aha. It is strange that Madhurand Hakar, who used to wince at the word fight, has learned how to handle the sword so skillfully. 
Are you in a knife fight with the ephemeral candor? Alas! Is Kalantagakangdur retreating? Is he really backing away from exhaustion or is he backing away hesitantly because of his son-in-law anyway? Either way you're approaching the tip of the dangerous waterfall. Alas! He doesn't seem to know that there is a steep waterfall. Vandiyathevan and all Alwarkadian tried to warn him with loud shouts. Their efforts were in vain. The sound of show as the waterfall falls can drown the roar of a hundred lions and the cries of two hundred elephants. Can the voices of these two men rise above the din, and what? So they had to sit idly by as the horrific incident unfolded before their very eyes. While fighting with his enemy son-in-law, little by little, Pulavetare came to the end of the waterfall, slipped his feet and fell into the steep waterfall. The old mad Huron Thakan who had fought with him came to the edge of the rock and peered out and disappeared the next moment. The ditch below where the small predator slipped was about three quarters of the height of a coconut tree. A person falling from such a height cannot be expected to survive. However, the two friends ran near the waterfall thinking that they would at least see the body of the great warrior. The body of Chinapulvatariyar is missing. The waterfall fell down and there was a big hole where the water was gushing and crashing against the surrounding rocks. They speculated that the body of the little rascal must have been submerged in the deep waterfall pool. In a way this is good. If it had fallen on the rocks on the shore, the body of the great hero would have been dismembered. He escaped that fate by falling into a deep pool. They were expecting that soon his body would be thrown out by the waterfall. Their hopes were not in vain. After a while the little gardener came out. The two friends quickly jumped into the pond and brought him to the shore. At first, they thought it was an inanimate body. Yet there was a faint hope in their hearts that perhaps life might not exist. So they performed the necessary treatments to revive the drowned person. After a long time, the little gardener took a breath and opened his eyes. He couldn't talk much. However, he said what needed to be said in a few words. After much effort Kalantagakangar reached the top of the mountain. Among about a hundred people there was his daughter. Ravidasan invited Kalanthakandar to join them. He said that his son-in-law belonged to the Pandian nation and that he was going to be crowned, and that the Chera king and Sri Lankan king Mahinda had come forward to help the new Pandian. In order to know their intentions, Chinapalyavatarayar Ravidasan was first listening to everything they had to say. Later. Accusing them of being conspirators, he asked them to send his Kumari away with him. If your daughter comes with you, you can take her. Said Ravi Dasan. The little gardener looked at his daughter's face. She refused to accompany him saying that her husband's fate would befall her. Vadpur started saying that. This caused Kalantakandar to be a little bewildered. A doubt arose in his mind that it was fair to kill his son-in-law with his own hands and make his daughter his concubine. Due to the confusion in the mind, he could not fight seriously. He bought it after a thinking. Not knowing that there was a waterfall behind him, he fell into it. Vadpur started saying that. This caused Kalantakandar to be a little bewildered. A doubt arose in his mind that it was fair to kill his son-in-law with his own hands and make his daughter his concubine. Due to the confusion in the mind, he could not fight seriously. He bought it after a thinking. Not knowing that there was a waterfall behind him, he fell into it. After saying all this with a bang, he said, I am not going to survive any longer. My end is near. Leave me here and hurry. Let the Chola Sanyam force immediately take over the Chera country and the Elam country. Take Pani's Selvara to Madurai and give him the anointed name of Chola Pandian. Get the title built. If these three things are not done immediately, the Chola Empire will surely suffer. The Pandya Kingdom will break apart again as before. Hurry up! Said Kalantagakangdur. His friends did not want to leave him as an orphan. So they decided that one of the two would look after him and the other would go to Tanjore. 